Rogan Josh is up there with one of the most popular curries in the world, so that's exactly what we're going to be making in this one. As of late, you guys have really been enjoying the curry recipe, so let's try and make this one as close to the traditional as possible. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy. <laughs> Alright guys, let's start this off by adding 750 grams or 1.6 pounds of diced lamb leg to a mixing bowl to then follow it up with 3 quarters of a cup or 170 grams of natural Greek yogurt, scraping it all in there to avoid any wastage. Hit this up with 1.5 teaspoons or 7.5 grams of sea salt flakes and then give it a good mix ensuring that the yogurt is completely coating the lamb, which will not only flavour the lamb, it will also help tenderise it and add a great overall flavour to our curry gravy. Once that's done, wrap it up tightly and place it in the fridge to marinate for a minimum of 1 hour all the way up to 24 hours. As for the prep for this dish, we're going to need 3 shallots that have had their tips, roots and peels removed and saved for a stock. Then with these, thinly slice them as best as you can in the half moon position and when you get towards the end, lay it flat to make it more stable and safer to finish the job, leaving us with something that looks like this. Next, grab 4 large garlic cloves and 15 grams or 0.7 ounces of peeled ginger, running them both along a fine microplane or box grater to create a paste which is also known as minced, making sure to scrape both of them out to avoid wastage. Last but not least, to create a spice paste, add 2 tablespoons or 14 grams of cashmere chili powder to a jar or bowl along with 1 teaspoon or 1.5 grams of ground fennel or ground fennel leaves, half a teaspoon or 1.5 grams of ground ginger and 3 quarters of a cup or 180 milliliters of cold water. Give this a good mix with a fork or whisk and this right here is going to be used to give our curry a final hit of amazing flavour as well as bringing us a deep red colour. I will also say that if you can't get cashmere chilli powder it can be subbed for red chilli powder just ensure it's not overly spicy otherwise the curry will be extremely hot but you might prefer that anyway and once this is all done just pop it aside for the time being. Now to get this cooking, place a large pan or pot onto your stovetop over a medium high heat and to it add in 2 tablespoons or 28 grams of clarified butter or ghee along with 1 tablespoon or 20 milliliters of canola oil to prevent the ghee from browning too much. Once the ghee is melted, add in 1 cinnamon stick, 5 whole cardamom pods, 4 whole cloves, 1.5 teaspoons or 4.5 grams of whole cumin seeds and 3 dried bay leaves. Give this a quick mix around to start frying these off to release their flavour, doing so for 2 minutes, stirring occasionally. For a quick breakdown, the cinnamon will add a warm fragrance, the cardamom pods add a deep menthol-like flavour, the cloves add an earthy sweetness, the cumin seeds add a warm nutty element, and the bay leaves will add a nice subtle piney fragrance and flavour. Next we can add in the thinly sliced shallots, frying these for 5 minutes, stirring frequently, or until starting to just caramelise which will extract a really nice sweet flavour. The next step is to add in the garlic and ginger paste to which we can break up and mix through and continue frying for 1 minute to release the fragrance, pretty much mixing the whole time to prevent it from burning. Once that's done, add in the marinated lamb, making sure to scrape in all of the yogurt and give this a really good mix to cover all of the ingredients in the flavour and cook this for 3 minutes, mixing it around occasionally just to get a little bit of browning on that meat. Pour over enough hot water to only just reach the top of the ingredients, we don't want to completely cover it otherwise the final sauce will be way too watery, then come through and give this another mix through to allow those flavours to become friends and then we can bring this to a boil. Once boiling, give it yet another mix to keep those flavours moving, then reduce the heat to low, place on a lid and allow this to simmer for 40 minutes. 40 minutes later, remove the lid being careful of the steam, then pour in the spice mix slurry and give this a big mix which will start to give this a really nice colour, add a little heat and greatly enhance the flavour. Check it for seasoning, adjusting accordingly, then place the lid back on and simmer for 20 minutes. Now in the meantime, place the saucepan onto your stovetop over a high heat, add in 1 cup or 200 grams of washed basmati rice along with 2 cups or 500 millilitres of cold water, 10 little sprigs of saffron which is optional so don't worry if you don't have or want to put it in and a small pinch of sea salt flakes to your taste. Give this a mix to break up any rice clumps then bring this to a boil and once boiling place on a lid, reduce the heat to low and steam this for 14 minutes undisturbed. Now 14 minutes later turn this off the heat, leave the lid on and allow it to finish steaming for a final 4 minutes then remove the lid being careful of the steam again and fluff it up with a spatula or a fork. Going back to the curry we can now carefully remove the lid giving it one final stir and you can see that this now is deeply red and the gravy has thickened up. This can then be checked for seasoning one last time again adjusting to your taste then remove it from the stovetop. 
As for serving this up, you can do it however you'd like to, but I like to place down a nice pile of the delicious saffron rice into a bowl, and then come through with the tender and tasty lamb, sitting it nicely into the rice. We can now pour over the fuller flavour sauce or gravy, completely covering the lamb and rice. Top this off with a spoon's worth of Greek yogurt or labna, then garnish with fresh coriander or cilantro, which is optional, leaving us with this incredible lamb rogan josh that's extremely tender. The sauce has the most amazing deep flavor and color, and the saffron rice is light and fluffy, making it the perfect partnership. All that's left to do now is make all of this worthwhile, and that is we can then dig in. So there we have it. This recipe right here serves two to four people, and like most of my recipes, it can easily be doubled, tripled, and so on, or halved if you wanted to make less. To store it, you can place it in the fridge for up to four days and in the freezer for up to five months, and to reheat it, place it back in a pan over a medium-high heat, just heat it up till it's nice and hot, or you can place it in a microwave, just do whatever's easiest for you. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button, comment, share, do all of that stuff. It really does help my channel out, and consider subscribing along with hitting that bell notification next to it so you never miss one I upload. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay safe and enjoy.